The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar in and out of the cigar industry. It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more Calvin. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. June 22nd, 2019. An explosive show today as we light up the yearly limited release of the Firecracker while we blow the IPCPR Retailers Trade Show officially out of the water as they take a major direction change away from their core. What and why? It's time for The Cigar Authority. And you are listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 10th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. You catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. Let's welcome back. And I I know, John, you were here once before. Back in November when we announced the... We were officially doing the firecracker, yes. Okay. Uh, John Fozzi, he's the regional representative for Christoph Cigars. Uh, Welcome back to the Cigar Authority. He is here because we are launching today the Christoph, uh, pissed off Christoph firecracker. Barry, tell us about it. Yep. So we're launching it today in the store. It will go online on Monday. And the pissed off Christoph uh, firecracker is manufactured in the Dominican Republic. By Christoph for United Cigars, and the size is three and a half by fifty, and it features a San Andreas wrapper over Indonesian binder with fillers from Nicaragua. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime, and a single cigar will set you back six ninety nine, while a box of twenty is one nineteen ninety nine, which is a savings of almost twenty dollars or fourteen percent off the box price at twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. All right, we just put it up there. Those that are watching on YouTube, you'll see uh, the packaging, beautiful packaging, the cigar as we intended it to be, because some manufacturers actually do it the way they want to do it. <laughs> Steve Saka. <Sokka. laughs> so the attended way Sorry, I had a is tickle the- in my throat is that the wick is tucked inside the band, and it's an unfinished foot. And I think it's a perfect cigar for Pissed Off Christoph to do because they always did the little tur- curly head on the top. They always yep. did the unfinished foot. I would have been shocked if they didn't do it the right way yeah. <laughs> uh, because you always do it the right way. Um, but uh, Pissed Off Christoph is the full-bodied Christoph line, right? So it gets billed as being the fullest-bodied cigar that we do. It- for most full-bodied smokers, I think they're going to find that it smokes a lot more medium-esque in reality, Yeah, but it's full, full flavor. Okay. And I think a lot of times, and I saw it more times than I can count when I was in retail, consumers tend to sometimes make that confusion um, and, and consider flavor to be strength of a cigar. Yep. Yeah, Dave does that all the time. Also confuses ring gauge with strength. Uh, I have this at about uh, six and a half inches. <laughs> with, if, the, with the tail, <laughs> if right? you stretch the wick out, which I think, I mean, that's all tobacco there, Barry. I think you need to update your show notes. That's a long cigar. All right, three and a half smokable. No draw, though, if you, if you just smoke, <laughs> smoke just the pull end. on the wick. Um, so New England sales rep, former retailer. Correct. I was with a shop, Havana Cigar Club, down in Warwick, Rhode Island for four years, just about four years. And that's one of the many reasons I love you, because you actually understand the retailer's end of it. You understand the manufacturer's end, because you work for a manufacturer, and you understand the representative end, so we can talk talk, uh, because you were part of all of this. Um, um, And um, what really happened with... um, the firecracker, when we originally came up with this, it was part of um, this little fat boy cigar that's, that first started out, that later became Nub. And um, the, the folks at um, Oliva 
took this concept and they went national with it and it was unbelievable. And while, while I'm sitting there giving it up and saying, oh my God, look what ended up happening with this. So we tried to redo this and make this an, into a national thing. And with the help from manufacturers like Kristoff, each year we do a limited release with um, a different manufacturer that we think would be the right mix for the firecracker, explosive. And what I'll say about Kristoff, as you're saying, no, it's not a, um, it's a full flavored, but not a very uh, full, uh, strong cigar. Um, I would say when it comes to a Kristoff, it's a creeper. Kristoff, pissed off Kristoff, maybe starts off and you say, wow, this is a medium bodied cigar. As you get into a pissed off Kristoff, this thing is building up. And before you know it, you say, you know, you talk to somebody and say, what do you think of it? And they say, medium bodied, it's probably a five or a six. As you're talking for a little while, ah, oh, maybe it's a seven or an eight. As you get going, maybe it's a nine. Oh my God! Look what what happened with this. Um, and and part of that is it's it's a little stronger nicotine content than anything else we produce in in most of what other manufacturers are producing as well. Yeah, and what I was thinking that would happen here is now that it's a much shorter format, three and a half inches that, boom, this thing that builds up in strength is going to happen right at the beginning. Now, Barry, you've smoked this thing through. I've, I haven't. I've smoked like five or six so far since yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I, I, when I told you he doesn't have a consumption No, problem. not at all. Yeah. Not at all. When this originally came in, and we've had it for a couple of months that we've been yeah. sitting on this thing, I cut one, so, so if there was a draw, lit it to make sure it was burning properly yeah. and everything, and put it down, and, and literally spent a, no more than a minute with this thing. Um Instead, I'm going to smoke it for real on the show. So it's my first time end up doing it. But uh, also what I want to say is we do the care package, which is uh, four cigars go out every single month to people. This became the fifth cigar in the um, prime. prime. So those people that did the care package prime and got an extra cigar, we have uh, 150 or so. It's a little bit more than yeah, that. Yeah, whatever it is um, that... We, we thought this is, you know, and the idea of this thing was we could put limited things that we only have a small amount of right, right. on there. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm figuring a couple boxes from a manufacturer, if they can sell us a couple boxes or something, but it's already turned into yeah, much more than that already. It's so. taken on a life of its own. <laughs> so uh, can we please cut it so we can get to smoking it for crying out loud? I am loud. trying to put this off as long as I possibly can. <laughs> well, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> I'll smoke it. Okay, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. And this is a, a deciding factor, those, those that are on the prime of the care package that have it. Do you take the wick out? Do you leave the wick there? Uh, what do you do? Cayenne pepper. Right on the cold draw. It's right there. It's in your face. I'm getting nervous. It's, uh, I... Really, Ed Sullivan? I tend to leave the wick on. For a little while. Yeah, well, it, it hugs the cigar, so it should catch fire and start to combust. And I just like to see the fuse actually lit. Okay. Um, I'm getting um, raisins. Very raisiny. Little... Pepper, spice, not too, a cayenne pepper, strong. No, specifically really? cayenne pepper. It's not burning the tongue, but that's the, that's the taste. See, for me, it's more of a red pepper flake. Um, yeah, that hot. You're getting it that hot? I yeah, crushed it. red pepper, you know, on top of the pizza. You, mm -hmm. 100% what I'm getting. Without any further ado, we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Intimidator. The Vertigo Intimidator has a bendy, bendy neck. It's got four jets that come alive when you press that single action button. It's got the patented Vertigo big ass tank, an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, and a color changing flame so you never lose the flame if you're lighting your cigar out in the sun. Great cigar lighter for the golf course. Vertigo Intimidator retails for $24.99. Speaking of the golf course, we've got a celebrity here today from the Golf Channel. Derek's here visiting from Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City. Um, and he's an audio guy on the Golf Channel. We apologize. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's, he's looking at this saying... He came out for two days, basically, just to see this. 
I, I already crazy. apologize. How much more, what more can I say? Then I'm I sorry. heard that he sent us a uh, metric shit ton of meat. Yes, it's currently in the freezer in Nashua, and I will bring it over here to the show. And he so was so careful. to the four of us. He Meat's was careful to make sure that there was no swine in it so that you could partake. Ah. Well, Kansas City meat. That would be a good snack opportunity for the show we're recording. Right. Ah, yes, Wednesday. I think we're going to we'll send it over it. on Tuesday, and then Jonathan's going to prepare a nice. show lunch for See us. See how you guys work yourselves in a free lunch right there? Yeah. So, and make so, me work extra? Isn't there a steak that you would say, how do you want your steak cooked, Kansas City? I think Kansas City is a barbecue style. Yeah, Kansas City is known for their barbecue. Is there, is there you which is a cook your steak, they, they Kansas a, City? Like Pittsburgh, which would be burnt on the outside and raw on the inside. Isn't there a Kansas City style? It's a cot, the Kansas City cut of meat. Like the New York sirloin, the Kansas City what? It's Kansas City Strip. Kansas City Strip, which is different than the Kansas City Strip. You're thinking of Barry Stein. Get <laughs> yeah, it out of your mind. Okay. <laughs> which has yeah, something to do with going, going to the later. bathroom, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> and we'll save that for another show. Um, so this was an unfinished foot. We light it, and... Again, another reason for the unfinished foot idea when it comes to the firecracker is that you're going to light the unfinished foot, which is wrapper, you're going to draw that in, and then it should be boom. That's what we should have happening, right? Well, the boom definitely happens on the retro hail because it makes my eyes water. Hmm. And this is Jonathan do it because he's that type of guy, right? He takes one for the team here. Oh, look at you. I am shocked. Wow. <laughs> It's the training with Satan's toe. He, very smooth. <laughs> what, he, what he does is... It's very smooth. I'm, I'll tell you for, from a guy that doesn't really retro heal much, <laughs> is you hold it all in your mouth, and then you blow it, then you blow, try to blow it out your nose, and then you, you cough the rest of it out. Yeah, and right? you know what you so, do is you Monday morning quarterback after so, I do it So every listen time. to me. Blow, no, I'm not doing blow it some again. out. I'm not doing it again. Do the front and the back and the I back I did it once. Front. I almost threw up. I'm good. Not now. It's because you're doing it wrong. But next time you do it, blow no. most of it out, and whatever's left is what goes through the nose. I'm good with my technique. No, you're not. <laughs> I have. Because it, it, it's bad for business, no. let me tell you. Just, just so you know, when you cough every time you smoke a cigar, it's not good. My technique Somebody's for thinking about buying these on Monday. cigars, not for retrohaling. These cigars go on sale Monday, 10 a.m. Monday, Monday at 10 a.m. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number, twoguyscigars.com, and what will they do? There'll be a banner right on the front page. You click that, it'll take you to the uh, to the purchase and page. And you can't buy more than two. Can't buy more than two. All right. That's, that's, um, that's, I'm glad we said that on the show because that's news to me. All right. <laughs> because what we don't want is a bunch of people buying them and selling them on the black market and Correct. stuff like that. and. Two's plenty, right? You're gonna maybe you're gonna get a box and put it aside and save it for a later date. And this one you're gonna open for Fourth of July because let me tell you, smoking the cigar right now, it's aged well. We actually held on to it for a few months even after we received it, but it was aged tobacco and it was aged before we even got it. It's aged even more. This is ready to go. This is ready to smoke right now. John Fozzi, what do you think? It, everything I would expect out of pissed off. Yeah, it, flavor is a uh, pretty much on par with. All the other sizes in the in the portfolio. Um, and that's one thing you guys do a great job of is keeping the flavor profile. I don't smoke pissed off Kristoff often, but when you come in, you'll often have one for me. And I have tried all the sizes, even that big one that the extremely that, pissed that, off. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's ten inches long. The flavor is very consistent from size to size. So a lot of times when you go into a smaller cigar, the blend changes so dramatically, it's like you're smoking a different line. You guys did a great job of keeping that blend the same. So if you want to smoke it for longer, you have that flavor for longer. Yeah, I it's um in March when we released the little pissed off in that Corona format five by forty four. That was something I was very curious to see if bringing it into that smaller ring gauge, smaller sizing was gonna make it a, a heavy hit out of the box. If that spice was really gonna hit you and, and how it was gonna play and. I don't find a difference whether no, I smoke the that extremely off. or I smoke that little pissed off. I think the, the, the smoking experience with the pissed off is identical. Now, the firecracker to me is a little bit more tweaked. There's a little bit more pepper, a little bit more spice. Um, I definitely notice it more in the retro hail than I do. On the more up front, like, right? more up front. Yeah. It's more of, that was the idea of it. It's more boom. For people right. listening on the podcast that don't watch the show, you're going to want to see this one. Watch for 30 seconds because Barry Stein has uh, – his annual hair color change. 
I, 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 I ignored it. Yeah. I, I ignored it. I made believe like I didn't even see it, but of course, yes. hard to miss. Yeah, he's blonde here. Yeah. And I was very open about it this year. My daughter suffers from mental illness, and I let her do this to be Father's Day to let her know that it's okay to be a little bit different. You are more than a little different, my friend. So. You yeah. achieve difference. How about do the mustache? Nah, it's the guy for everything. I actually like the hair when it starts to grow out in the black roots. Show. Ah, or the brown gray. roots or the gray roots. And are you losing a little up front? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, and for I, those I'm, listening, he's you know, talking about his hair. Yeah, and I'm sure dying it doesn't help either. So Correct. Usually yeah. you don't see it. Now I see it because yeah. I can see a scalp on top because you dyed all the way to the roots. Well, then yes. you spiked it because you wanted to really look like Guy Fieri. I just got to find myself a black shirt with the uh, flames on it in my size. <laughs> my size. <laughs> so if anybody has a, a lead on that, send me a message on Facebook. All right, so uh, we're smoking the firecracker, the pissed off Christoph firecracker, um, and and there's a unknown determination of how many boxes of cigars we have here. I had 500. You had posted something like 250. 250. Yeah. I I think it came in at, at uh, the high threes. Again, they're making a one off of these things, so they have to you make. Can't stop whole, it exactly. You can't you can't have it exact, and I got to take them all, whatever it ends up being. So, um, and then as you're making them, the wicks break off sure. and this didn't work and whatever. So there's cost that things that, ha- that happen with that. Um, so wh- whatever it ended up being. But the fact of the matter is of past firecrackers, we've had Don Pepin Garcia that um, we started off with. This is different from the regular firecracker that's made all the time that we have at all times. But the Don Pepin, then later on Tatuaje, um, same factory. Um, actually, maybe not the same factory. That might have been Miami at the time. Then there was uh, La Flor Dominicana. And you can see these are all what would be considered a full-body cigar. Yeah. Fratello, we had next. Fratello was made at Toya de Nicaragua. Yep. Um, so we gave that a shot. We did Roma Craft uh, out of Nicaragua also. Uh, Mi Carita out of Nicaragua. So it, as you see, everything was Nicaraguan. Which soccer also does out of the Hoya de Nicaragua Correct. factory. So. so everything was a full-bodied cigar, and everything was made out of Nicaragua in the past. So this is another... Except for f- La Flor Dominicana. Oh, geez. Okay, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> they have Dominicana right. in their name, which is Spanish for Dominican. You know, and every time... You, you always think of La Flor Dominicana because it's so full-bodied as not being Dominican. And that, and that was my point here of, um, here we have a Dominican cigar. Um, and, and it's on par with all yeah. of them. It's on par. It belongs in that upper end of fuller bodied, especially when you get down to the to the size. I'm going slow on it. Yeah, the, in Dominican Republic, they think of a full bodied, a full strength, full bodied cigar differently than they do in Nicaragua. Yeah. So, like a Glory Cubano or something, they would say that's their full, full body cigar, right. and it's it's not, you know, yeah, it's a six. Yeah. When when this is certainly. Uh, Heads and shoulders above that. I'm at about eight and a half right now. I'm starting to feel a little heaviness on my chest, and I'm getting lightheaded. All right. You think you'd pass out for the show? For the show. For the show. Just pass No, I'm slowing down now. This is just just slow down. Keep sucking. You know you want to. All right. There's a lot going on in the cigar industry right now. We are uh, a week away from the IPCPR trade show. Uh, actually, a little less than that uh, right now, and um, I'll be leaving on Thursday. Uh, we will tape the show, actually, in advance uh, of, of going for next week's show, where we're going to reveal next week every single uh, new product that's coming out that we uh, know about, even if we were, at the time, told not to say it until the show, because it will be taped for that Saturday, which the show will be open, so we can get away with that. But right now, there's a lot going on in the cigar world, so let's hear it now. Uh, what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein? It's time for What's What's Up up? in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse Cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled N2 bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse Cigar today. And in the state of Connecticut, Democrat Governor Ned Lamont has signed the Tobacco 21 legislation making that another state to join the movement. Boo! Vote them out. In the state of New Hampshire, earlier this year, a Tobacco 21 move was defeated, or so we thought. 
As the budget is slated to be voted on next week, there is language hidden within it that would raise the tobacco age to 21 in the state of New Hampshire. All right, and I am calling for an illegal act that took place at that point. Um, what they're trying to do is um, tax vape within the state. Right. And supposedly a back-end deal with the vape industry, which I talked to somebody high up in the vape industry, said that's not the case. Uh, but how I heard it from our lobbyists was that they would lower that tax rate on the vape to make it so that the state wasn't at a major disadvantage with the surrounding states if they would give in to 18, 19, and 20-year-olds, and it was agreed upon. Uh, again, the vape industry denying that that's what it, what it is. But the language got through for 18, 19, to 20 year olds, despite the fact that it was defeated in there and actually thrown into a budget. The people in the, in the finance do not get to make laws mm -hmm. and change the law in the direction of how the business takes place. So we're talking about major lawsuits and things that can happen. Who's going to go forward with that lawsuit? Uh, I hear it's going to be the vape industry. Um, certainly, um, we don't get a lot of um, help when it comes to the 21 effort within our own industry, unfortunately. Um, so we have to, f for the most part, fight it alone. Um, they have a lot of things to deal with, and um, the 21 thing is like, you know, it's just going to happen anyway type of thing. Right. I like to fight to the death, to the end Keep anyway. Keep on fighting. Do you? There's no fight I left. Do, if you haven't noticed that about me. I, yeah. I'm blown away. And the fact that it was defeated... It cannot go for another vote until the following calendar year. And if they're going to play it up as, okay, this thing is going to take effect, which I heard, January 1st. So, oh, we'll vote now and it'll take effect January 1st to get around that. That's not still not the way. Which is also interesting because when they vote on the budget, the budget goes into effect July 1st. This year. This year. Correct. So if it's part of the budget and they're making it January, it seems more like they're circumventing the law in that aspect. But that's what it looks like to me that, that's going on. I don't like it. I'm speaking up about it. Um, at the same time, federally, they're looking. There's a bill already to go there's 21. Like six of them, yep. And they look like they got good shots at going. So it may yeah. go federally anyway. But in the meantime, I'm going to fight nationally, locally, and uh, statewide to make it not happen. But... Eventually, I think they are going to win, it looks like, it looks like it. Uh, but that doesn't mean stop fighting. And we have to keep fighting because once it becomes 21, you know there's going to be some knucklehead town going for 25. Yeah. So you got to put your foot down. Didn't you say in a past show uh, why he was looking at 30 and then 80? Yeah, they're, they're looking at some astronomical thing that would make it illegal to smoke until you're in your 90s after a certain amount yeah. of time. It's nuts. Yeah. Uh, CBD and marijuana have been banned from the 2019 trade show. Uh, this measure comes from the Sands, which has a strict policy against them, which is believed to be tied into their gambling licensing. Which is interesting that there's one little company out there that has a CBD, which is not marijuana, right? which is legal, right? And it's legal in this marijuana and CBD is legal in Nevada. And yet this poor guy that put this little brand out that it, what, didn't interest me. It wasn't something I was going to buy. But I feel for the for the, this guy that this is his new launch. He put everything into Why it. Why would they allow that in the IPCPR to begin with? Well, CBD it's a, it's is a not, cigar. It's in the cigar. It's a cigar that has CBD oil in it. Uh. I don't like it, and I wasn't buying it anyway. But it's not the point. It's, it's, it's stopping somebody that's... Putting this product out. It's it's trying to marry two different worlds together, in my opinion. I'm against that. And this week, the IPCPR announced it would be hosting a meeting at the trade show for a special announcement. The Cigar Authority broke that news that it was for a name change to Premium Cigar Association. The fallout's been huge, and we'll have more on that later in the show. And lastly, Nick Prudomo Jr. has promoted Nicholas Prudomo III, or Nick Prudomo Trey, to the National Director of Sales. There we go. And John Fozzie, waka waka, that's what's up in the cigar world. <laughs> God. Yeah, we're going to get, so, so that um, John, John Fozzie doesn't have to get beat up in the, in the industry, uh, along with his, his bosses and everybody else, of what he thinks about this IPCPR uh, 
change that's going on. We're going to talk about it in the next hour in detail, so stick around because I got some things to say, and Barry would like to get on his soapbox and uh, um, get his ranting. So we have I have, to, I have at least two new dick jokes and one fart joke, so I'll, I'll be participating in the second hour yeah. as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, upcoming shows that we have coming up. Um, uh, next week's show, we're going to tape in advance of going to the show. We're going to release, as, as I say, all the different cigar brands that are coming out and uh, probably talking more about IPCPR as we learn more of uh, the changes that are happening there. When I come back from the show, July 6th, uh, we will have Eric Wentworth from Hammer and Sickle with us, and we'll talk about the IPCPR trade show, uh, what happened, and uh, the fallout that uh, I believe is going to end up happening there. I think it's going to get ugly, and we'll report all that back when, I, when we return on July 6th. The following week, week, July 13th, looking forward to this one, Barry Stein, or whatever your last name is, will not be here. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan, whatever your last name is, he won't be here either. And uh, I'm going it alone. Well, not alone. Ed Sullivan will be here despite what um, people are writing about right. us, which and, we'll have on the episode. And I have a last name. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. Um, but does it Michael, make you cool? It does. Michael Capolini from Toscana will be here, and we'll be doing this Italian style without you guys. And, uh, so it's you're Salavino. not really alone. You've got a guy that can handle himself. I'm bringing somebody can. in. Like, you bring your brother in and stuff when <laughs> I'm not there. I'm not bringing my brother in. I can't. But And I bet I'm, you Dave won't be reading some article for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Thank God. <laughs> uh, July 20th, we're bringing Steve Soccer in with his brulee cigar, and we'll, we'll talk to him about uh, any follow-up in, in his feeling of it. So this, this IPCPR, or um, Premium Cigar Association, um, will... Uh, I got a bone to pick with Soccer, too. Ah, good. So let's save that. Pick the bone when he's here, so you don't give him any ammunition, um, and he hears and gets prepared for it. It's a, there's no way for him to prepare for this. Ah, <laughs> he refused to give credit where credit was due. I'm not bitter about it. Yes, you are. <laughs> but I broke the story three and a half hours before anybody else. Yeah, and, they, uh, and hey, he's referring to somebody else's breaking it. Listen, we uh, the, the uh, trade suck a duck. The, the trade show <laughs> has a um, a thing where the media shows up at the thing, and uh, we weren't invited. Every media was invited, and we weren't invited. Uh, and I called them out on it, and they sent an invitation to you. No, I never got it. I saw the email they sent you. Yeah. They, they'll include me. Yeah. I, and then there was another release from them for the uh, CBD not being allowed at the show. I didn't get it. No. No. Hmm. Stop Sorry. pissing them off. <laughs> hey, we don't get the press releases. We don't get the information. We are the redheaded stepchild. Uh, I got to imagine I spend more money at that trade show than anybody in the whole industry. How can that be possible? You got these big giant booths. Because I got a big giant booth. But it's not as big and giant as them. But I also spent a million dollars on this trade show floor. And with media. And no respect. You get no respect and you get no respect probably because of me. So I'm sorry that you're getting no respect, but your connection with me is probably the I, I would thought it'd be the other way around. Me too. Yeah, you hired Barry. Screw you. <laughs> I'm with Barry on this. Two, I did two. I agree 100 percent with Barry. Uh, Ed Sullivan, mark the tape. You can use that as a drop later. I got it. Okay, so this is a Dominican firecracker, and we have a regular Dominican firecracker, but this one I can feel in the face. It's like a, a punch in the face. Yeah, they are so totally different. Yeah. This is like, a punch in the face. You know when you wear you wear the paint masks, you know, you're dealing with some real fumes and you got the two filters on the side. It, it, yeah. it tastes like the pressure of the mask on your face. Ah. It's a lot of pressure. Not, not actually bad, because this is the feeling I'm getting from this. I'm, I'm feeling like somebody is hitting me in the face. Not knocking me out, but it's, <laughs> it's hitting me. It's not concussion. <laughs> See, not maybe a little concussion. I'm a third of the way through mine, and some of that slap you in the face spice that was there in the beginning. Yeah. Either I've adjusted to it. Or it's toning down a no, little no, bit. No, no, it's getting sweeter. But you yeah, could, it's you, toned. But you could feel the, the, the nicotine content kind of growing. So it's wow. it's, it's pow. If, if uh, Kramer was here, it'd be like kung pow chicken. It's not like kung pow I, chicken. I don't feel exactly like Barry Stein's sitting on my chest, but I do feel like he's doing the... Um, Who's the rum guy? Teabagging you? No, what, huh? Captain Morgan. <laughs> like he's doing the Captain Morgan with his foot on my chest. Ah. So it's it's a Barry Stein, Captain Morgan level. 
and Ed Sullivan, who likes the full body stuff. I'm loving it. Loving it. Loving it. And size wise, everything's perfect. For everything's you, right? perfect. So you're probably good for a few boxes. Well, more than a couple. Limit two. Ah, uh, limit two. Okay. So yeah, but say. we get the employee thing. <laughs> Ed Sullivan, you can have my two, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, everybody, this is going to sell out Monday. So if you listen to the show, or you listen, the majority of people listen to the show on Monday morning. Yep. And uh, so you're listening, you're driving to work, or whatever you're doing on, the, on uh, right now. It's Monday morning, 10 a.m. Uh, it goes online. Uh, don't, don't wait till 11 and say I'll, I'll get this at lunchtime or something. I, uh, I wouldn't wait. I'm gonna, if, if you're interested, pull the trigger. I'm going to say something that's going to piss you off. All right. So we prepared the website to get everything going. If you're listening to the Cigar Authority. The graphic that you could click on will probably be up about 9.50. Ah. So if you listen to the show, you can get about a 10-minute head start. Ah, just a little secret to the, the regular listeners. I like it. Let's give them a little something. 10-minute head start for those that – so you time it or you're going to cl- click the button? I'm going to click the button. All it right. always goes up 10 minutes before the email goes out, so we're going to give you a 10-minute head start. All right. 9.50 for you uh, people listening. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, the Pissed Off Kristoff will be available for a limited time. How do you try one? We'll tell you how to get one if you want to just try that. Um, as the IPCPR is coming down the road just a week away, we got a lot to talk about with that. We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo and Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown No. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut shade wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Kristoff was pissed off, I was surprised. Kristoff cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Kristoff is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. 
or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. This is Nicholas Melillo, a.k.a. Nick Aragua from Foundation Cigar Company. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we're back. We're smoking the pissed off Kristoff firecracker with John Fozzi from Kristoff. I'm taking my time. You guys are going a lot faster than me. I have never relit. It's staying lit, it stays but lit. slow. This would be a good one to go to, to the, how long you can smoke a cigar. I'm going to get an hour out of this thing. I'm about 30 minutes in. I still got another 30 minutes to go with this, I hope. It's quite good. Um, so how's it smoking? Everything's going good for everybody here? It's burning well. It looks like a, a tight line, like it's got... Held an ash for a good long time, and then I Barry Stein myself on the desk, which uh, that's a technical term. That means you lost your ash and made a mess. I'm getting, the difference is I cleaned up after myself. I'm getting notes of uh, crushed red pepper, but on the retro hail, it's a white pepper. There's also a little bit of nuttiness along the lines so you of pecans. put it through your nose? Sweetness. You put it through your nose and you got less intensity? No, the white pepper to me has more intensity than the red pepper. Light red pepper. You might be the only person on the planet. Not if you have a little bit of red pepper taste <laughs> and a lot of white pepper. That's what he's saying. A lot of white pepper on the retro heel. See if he's right. No. See if he's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, John Fozzi, uh, we come out with something crazy like a, a pissed off fist or firecracker. Do you have any retailers that ask you directly for it, like, like you guys would sell it? As we've talked, as I've talked with accounts, as I've been moving yeah. around to let them know that we were doing something like this and, and to use it as a tool on my end is pitching one-off projects for other, okay. other retailers as well. Good. Um, there's definitely been feedback on, on stores wanting to try it or get their hands on okay. it to see what it's all about. But you do have now a little... Christoph, right. Christoph, Christoph. Right, that Corona came out back in March, that 5x44 size. Um, for me personally, I'm a huge Corona fan anyway. Corona and Lancero is is my go-to yeah. sizes, even though I know Lancero's aren't exactly the most popular in the industry. Um, 
the flavor on it to me on those smaller sizes is just outstanding. Ed Sullivan has turned me on to Coronas in a big way that uh, every morning we get together and I'm be going to Coronas because yeah. he's that's what he's smoking. Right. So, all right, let me try this. And I'm starting to like it, too. Usually I'd go to a thicker ring gauge, but I'm liking it, too. When it comes to the little uh, Christoph, the Corona, um, compared to this strength-wise flavor, is it, is it close to the same type of thing? I think so. Okay. Very so, similar. So it's yeah. an option for people that the when the fight crackers are gone or something, where do they go if they're looking for this type of thing? That's, is that, that going to be that the closest? Little, that little pissed off yeah. will definitely be the closest, yes. Okay. And what we try to let happen with us is as we're selling these off and people end up having this basically sampler, three and a half inch cigar, right? It's the taster size of it. What we end up seeing is somebody falls in love with it and says, geez, I'd like this in a Toro size. I'd like this in a Churchill size. And guess what? Yeah, we got it. Fortunately, we already yeah. have six sizes available in it. Yeah. Can't count boxes too. I mean, it's an easy box buy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it comes to the firecracker, which is a 20, 20 car. Right. Yeah. Um, so, um, how's business out there with, with Christoph? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, no complaints at all. It was uh, the year started out spectacular and it's been holding its own all the way through. IPCPR, as you know, is always, it's always the big time of right. year. Uh, the the push is on right now. Twenty twenty five percent of your overall business. Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, but I, I, it's got to be a very good sized yeah. chunk, yeah. without question. And hopefully, it stays that way. We're gonna so next week we're going to do an episode letting people know what's going to be coming out at IPCPR. Is there anything that you can let the cat out of the bag prior to that show? A little bit of a tease. It, well, for us this year, there is no new cigar. Okay. Um, however, we are rebranding an existing line so our christophe britannia which is a connecticut shade grown yeah is going to come into the a little more into the christophe family portfolio and it's going to be rebranded and relabeled as christophe shade grown okay uh, all new packaging all new color scheme on it uh new labels uh, looking like the, the regular looking line? like the standard line okay yes. so now uh, it becomes a shade version of the christophe correct yeah, and, and same wrapper, same everything? Yes. Is it a Ecuadorian shade that's on there? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I believe so it is. Okay. Uh, right now, it's time for the matchup of the week. Brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair Cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? And today, it is, uh, would you rather be the first person to explore a planet versus being the inventor of a drug that cures a deadly disease, which would you rather be? You want to explore a planet? Or Can I take a good look at Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, no, you can't. Then I'm out. Uh, yeah. I'm going disease. He's, he's, he's thought about looking at Uranus for a long time. Would you ever be an astronaut and go to, go somewhere? And If I can go to Uranus? Yeah. I don't think you can go to Uranus, right? I was the first man... On Uranus. I mean, that's that's a tagline. That's a, that's a great pickup line. Would you? you they have uh, Elon Musk that's uh, get going to send people into orbit. Would you do it? No. You'd have to pay a million dollars to do it or some crazy right. amount like that. But would you do it for free? No. Instead of paying a million. I don't like to fly. Really, I don't like taking off. And then all I would be this thinking about... This whole thing is taken off, right? Is, 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 there's <laughs> the whole that, Krista McAuliffe thing. I'm out. Huh. The thing's going to explode right on takeoff. I'm, I'm not doing so it. So you'd certainly rather be the guy that... In Can you imagine it? being the insurance provider for that takeoff? Landing bothers me more than taking off. No, no, no. You, you're already coming down on the landing. Yeah, but you got the crosswinds. You the, feel the plane doing a little bit of a sway in action. Yeah, the pilot doesn't want to die either. The takeoff... If, if something goes wrong... That's all they do is take off and land. But the plane does all the rest. He he may not see something coming on the takeoff. The wing rips off or whatever. I mean, you're on the landing. A all the stuff is already working. A bird flies into the engine. Everybody who's ever died on the plane died on impact. Landing. Not taking off. The landing mm. is where you die. I understand that. But yeah. the takeoff is the part where something could go wrong. The plane's been sitting up for a while. Did you see the video this week of a, a turbulence that gone wild or something there was a turbulence I've thing i've seen videos like that but oh, i haven't seen the one it was brutal john fazi you want to um... uh, you know it, the space travel intrigues me but i don't know if i want to be the first guy to step outside 
of that on vehicle Uranus? onto <laughs> Uranus. Yes. Um, <laughs> it, uh, I, I think I'd be more concerned about what would happen stepping off. So I, I would probably want to invent a drug. Barry? I would invent a drug. But I don't know if it would be like something like that really needs to be cured. I just would like a pill for Jonathan to take before the show where he's a little bit more friendly. Yeah. More yeah. Friendly. For nothing but friendly. That, that would help the world. <laughs> wow. Ed Solomon, would you ever travel to space? I, I don't like to travel anywhere, no. so I'll invent a drug. And uh, we're all nice people that we want to help other people as opposed to help ourselves and just do something. I was going to Uranus, <laughs> but you said I couldn't go there, so I'm, trying I to, I'm saying something nice about you. It's not going to ruin your reputation. It's already ruined. <laughs> uh, you deserve a bell for that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it is what it is. Pissed off, Christoph, available for a limited time, meaning just hours, not days. It's going to be on Monday at 9.50 for you listening. 9.50 a.m. Eastern time. Go to twoguyscigars.com. You can buy a single cigar if you want. All right. Don't buy one to try it because if you like it, they're going to be gone. So yeah. You can buy another. Yeah. I mean, I, we, we, ha we have a few guys that call in and they'll go, yeah, I'll take two to try it. So it's about money, though, that people can't, have, you know, their budget or whatever Right, it is. they don't want to risk $120, but I think this gets the thumbs up from all of us. So 120 for a full box. Yep. Here's, here's the um, smart guy move. 120 for a box, you throw a few extra in, extra singles right. to get to 150 and we got to pay the shipping. So the shipping's going to cost you... Eight ten dollars, whatever shipping is. Yeah. So, you know, bump it up thirty bucks and get some extra and cigars. If you try the singles and don't like it, you'll be able to sell the box right. once we're sold out. Somebody's going to want to get more. They're probably going to want to give you more. We didn't encourage the black market. Yeah, sell we don't want to encourage the black market. <laughs> I'm not. It's yeah. after to sell out. So, for those that are mathematically challenged, a box and five singles will get you free shipping. Here we go. And then you get the five singles to smoke and leaving the box intact. For a later day, maybe just an option. Uh, so that's it. About a box of five singles, you might as well go two boxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. There's there's a sales pitch from uh, Barry Stein. <laughs> Buy two. They're small. <laughs> they are <laughs> small. Yeah, they're too small. A big thank you to all those out there who are liking our sharing our podcast, especially those who subscribe on YouTube. By the way, if you want to piss off Pete, who does the packaging, leave in the comment field no peanuts. Because then he has to struggle to find better packing material. Ah, don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're rubbing off on me. <laughs> Pete, there's no need of that. <laughs> Does Pete listen? Hey, sometimes. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> uh, do is... people actually do that? No peanuts? Yes. Well, we have one guy in Maine that does it because uh, he, he doesn't want to burn the styrofoam. And he has to pay for uh, a dump pass. So he requests paper packing material so he can burn it. I got gotcha. you. Is, isn't there uh, like peanuts that you put in water and they just... Right, soluble. Soluble? The ones that Padron sends are definitely soluble because you can lick them and stick them together and make mustaches and hats. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and you know this for a fact. Done it. Yeah. <laughs> Done it. Um, slow snow days in it, Nashua. Is this what it's going to come down to with the, like no straws and no, so now it's no peanuts? Mm -hmm. My wife got one of those metal straws. So when I go out and order a drink, I ask for two straws. She brings a straw with her? Yeah, she what? She brings a straw yeah. with her. That's because one of her friends started shaming her and she didn't want to hear it anymore. So she went out and bought the metal straws. Wow. Why, why are you going to walk around with your own straw? So last night I went to a concert. That was at one of those places where they bring drinks to you and stuff like that. So I order a drink, and they and they have the little swizzle straw that's in the drink, right? You can barely drink out of it anyway. It's more to stir, right? right? It's there. So the lady comes around later on, says, you want another one? All right, give us another round. They come with another round, and it comes with no silver straw. And she takes my swizzle straw out of my drink, puts it into my new drink, Ooh. and takes the cup and does the same thing to my wife's drink the same exact thing and now i'm just interested and i'm walk i'm looking around as this is going on he's not watching the concert right you? <laughs> I, I missed half the concert looking at this because i was intrigued by it and they did it to everybody so that's when i would go that fell on the floor i didn't expect to use it again now i need a new drink that's what you would that's do. Another dick but move. So you order two straws, dick move number two, and then you hassle the waitress, dick move number three, to listen, try to get a free drink. See, right now I'm trying to deflect all the hate dick. mail you get. By the way, the, 
the glass that it was in was plastic. <laughs> and they threw it out. <laughs> and it's the straw. Their problem is straws. They're against straws. It's, it's unbelievable mm. to me that this is the, the go-to. Not, it's not garbage bags that are made of plastic mm. bags. It's what, the, the straw industry must have a weak um, lobby. 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 That they're going after straw companies. You think it's bad in the cigar industry? They're trying to wipe out the straw industry. Well, some of the paper ones are coming back. Yeah, they, I don't know I if got you've got it. those yet. They're yeah. terrible. Yeah, terrible. Try Second drink. sip, the thing collapses on you. you just yeah, try drinking a like a burst a of blood vessel. Yeah, you it. can't do that. Can't do it. Next thing you know, you're using a plastic spoon to eat the thing. So what, it defeated the whole purpose. Although, I got to admit, Chinese takeout food tastes a lot better with plastic silverware versus regular metal silverware. Hmm. Like, if I go out for Chinese takeout, I ask for plastic utensils. Really? It just tastes so much better. You could just <laughs> use chopsticks. You're like a, a man. You're a weird soccer man. Oh, on fried rice, it doesn't really work that well. My, for once, my, my uh, pissed off Christoph Firecracker went out on me. I've been going so slow. Uh, and I went a little too slow on that. So let's get to the final thoughts here um, on Pissed Off Christoph. We'll start with John Fozzi because uh, you smoke probably more Christophs than we do. I, I'm guessing so, yes. Fozzie Bear. <laughs> I, uh, like I said, I, I've been, like yourself, I've been taking my time with yeah. it. I tend to be a slower smoker anyway. Uh, so um, flavor-wise, it's identical to anything else you're going to find in the Pissed Off line. Um, that punch off the off the light definitely subsides. There's still some strength and some some good spice yeah. notes to it, um, but again, it's more that that full flavor than a full body to it. It uh, it's definitely got a nice smoothness. It's about calmed it. down a little bit as far as the strength goes now that I'm in the final third here, uh, but it's still it's still plenty of flavor. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Very I, concentrated. I got the nicotine jitters right now. I mean, mm. oh yeah. For me, this is stronger Strong. than the rest of the pissed off Kristoff line. Yeah. And it might be because smaller cigars, as we know, are stronger. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Stop shaking your head, Mr. Jonathan. It's an yeah. audio show. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrably not true. Just like stacking dimes isn't a thing either. Uh, it's the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Oh, you don't like it? I hate it. I'm starting to like it now. <laughs> <laughs> stacking dimes is the new thing. So when, when are you heading out, John, to the show? I, I'm actually flying out on Wednesday evening. I'm getting uh, an early jump out. Good. Uh, I get a day in to relax. I'll work the phones and email from right. Vegas and then gear up for the show. Everybody else from the company will be arriving on Friday. Friday? And, ah. uh, they'll get in first thing Friday morning, and we'll get over and get the booth set up and ready to go and all right. be and, off and running. And you guys do it all? Uh, fortunately, we have a, a an organization that sets the booth oh, up for cool. us. So How we'll awesome is we'll, that? we'll we'll get there to put product in cases and and set up the displays. But it'll be uh, it'll be a quick and painless process compared to some others. Yeah, because it's about hundred and ten degrees there right now, and they don't have air conditioning during setup. Correct. Yeah. You've been there, Mr. Jonathan. You've gone through it. It sucks. Uh, and so you would think the union workers yeah. would fight for the air conditioning. But they don't turn the union workers don't get the air conditioning. There's no there's because they got the big um, doors open oh, okay. to drive the trucks through and stuff. Yeah, there's so. no question they're getting some sort of in quotes hazard pay because there's no air conditioning. But there's no so smoking either. In. All the doors are open, gigantic doors, yeah. and there's no smoking. And as soon as they kick the air conditioning on and okay, now you guys can smoke. Yeah, IPCPR sent out an email that was forwarded to me from somebody else because hmm. IPCPR won't send me their emails. Yeah, um, that you can only smoke during you know 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. trade show hours. You can only smoke within the hall. You yeah. can smoke outside the hall. They were very adamant about strict hours this year. Uh, I think you're going to get, be getting, uh, or I'll be getting at least uh, a message from IPCPR after the next hour. Because we're going to really dig into yes. the IPCPR. So we're going to go to a break. John Fozzi, thank you so much My for coming pleasure. on. Thank you. Always good to be with you guys. And um, IPCPR is just days away, and we're going to be, they are going to be making some big changes. We'll talk about what we know and what we don't. Uh, Bearing is hearing news and rumbling in the industry. We're going to uh, talk about that, what people are talking about. And we're going to uh, get up on our soapboxes and tell you what we think. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. Stick around on the United Podcast Network. 
Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced, and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available on Online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations, of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. 
The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Sono Michael Cappellini dal Toscano Cigars. Stai ascoltando al Cigar Authority sul United Podcast Network. Benvenuti a tutti voi. Michael Capolina from, from Toscano. He's going to be with us uh, live in studio July 13th. Uh, without Mr. Jonathan, without Barry, we got Italian food coming in. We're going to have cappuccinos, espressos, and some Italian goodies that nice. are going to be here along with uh, a new Toscano that's coming out that we'll talk uh, in next week's show. Stodovo. Yeah. So we got so much coming on there. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, all right. This is going to be an interesting hour because uh, we're going to say what we think and... Uh, um, I, I've been uh, somewhat quiet in uh, my responses out there. I, I did a little. I couldn't hold myself back a little bit. I think I, I responded to one thing on your thing, but on social media, yeah. but um, that was it. But uh, I think we're going from the fire into the fire. This is um, a full-bodied cigar. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's as full as what we just smoked. Um, but today's second cigar is the Aroa Yamastron. Wow, you said it right. I'm Shocking, very impressed. <laughs> You've been practicing. And it's manufactured in Honduras for CLE cigars. Gamastron with a J? Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. not Gamastron. Oh. You know, and the Yankees with the Y is pronounced Yankees. Uh, <laughs> but the size is 5 by 50 and it features a high priming Honduran wrapper over Honduran binder and fillers. A single cigar will set you back fifteen sixty nine. Why a box of eighteen and it's a unique looking pyramid style box is two forty nine ninety nine, which is a savings of almost thirty three dollars or twelve percent off the box price at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two guyscigars.com. The box is cool for those that remember yes. the Camacho Corojo. Diploma. When it first came out, the first original one that came out, that you slid this little top off of this pyramid, the top of the pyramid, you slide it off, and there was a bundle inside if you reached in, right. and it was paper-covered uh, bundle. But how the heck do you get the cigar out of there? So with your fingernail, you would have to rub against it and, and break into this paper that was inside there. At least they didn't really mess with you and put a ribbon. Oh, my whew. God. And, and then and had shake to... them out and try to get them. And they were uncellophane cigars that were in there and try to pry. And that was the only way to get them. This time, they created two different ways to get the the bottom it's slide. The easy down. way and the hard way. Yes. For guys that like to go in via the bottom yeah. like Jonathan, the yes. bottom came off. Yeah. Um, but no screws. In the past, they were held. That <laughs> box <laughs> back in the day was held together with screws. screws right. So you had to unscrew the box to get in them. So, and I, I did watch, Jonathan, one of your employees do it the hard way. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> On the first yes, box. Yes, he did. <laughs> and he may or may not be uh, have um, mental issues is, is what uh, some people are saying. We'll, it's possible. Yeah, we'll see that. Uh, so um, the um, 2019 version. So this may be something that's going to continue on. Yep. So there were two sizes made of this cigar. The 5x50 is... Uh, Available at all your brick and mortars, and then there was the 1118, which is available only through TAA. Okay. Um, two Guys Cigars, we still have um, some s singles left of the 1118, but we do have more on the way. Ah, okay. So. Virtually seamless wrapper. Beautiful. 
Very good. This is a pricey cigar. Did you mention the price? Yeah, this is a uh, fifteen sixty nine on All the right, Robusto. So mm. $15.69 Robusto. So this better perform. We're going to see. Christian, my buddy, this is, uh, this is up there in price. Let's see what happens. This will be my first time trying this, too. Uh, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Cold draw, very sweet cedar. The sweetness. Wow. Like brown sugar. So... The idea of this, I think, putting it in that diploma box was kind of bringing back the taste of what the diploma used to taste yep. like, which was very aged Corojo. Yes. And this has that taste of what it used to have. It absolutely does. One of those bring you back. Oh, totally. I've smoked them numerous times on both sizes. This... This is that cigar. So his father and brother do the Aladino. Yes. Have you smoked this yet? Yeah. Is it Aladino style? I'm not talking about it. And you smoke it and make All up right. your mind. Because on the cold drawer, I'll tell you right now, it has that flavor to it. It's very distinct, and it becomes one of those things that I need every once in a while. Not like Jonathan, mm -hmm. who needs it every single day. And I know I've used this flavor component he's before, an a animal. but it has that sugar coating of a Necco wafer. And I know I've gone there a lot, Lately. but it has that. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Intimidator. The Vertigo Intimidator is a quad jet lighter with a color-changing flame. The neck will bend. It'll actually not, uh, not be so bad as a pocket lighter. It's got the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, an easy adjustment at the bottom, all for the low price of $24.99. That's the Vertigo Intimidator. I've noticed Barry's been carrying this around a lot lately in his pocket. Yeah, well, it impresses the ladies. He could be happy to see you. <laughs> While he's preparing for his trip to Uranus. Beautiful ash. Beautiful white ash immediately after you light it. Yeah. This is definitely a walk down memory lane. Wow. This is strong, though. You're, you're <laughs> one puff. Strong. <laughs> one puff. See, after after we just smoked the pissed off Kristoff oh, firecracker, and I put that at an eight. Lighten this up compared to that, it comes off as a four. And I know it's not a four. No, this is But strong. this is nowhere near the strength as the explosive firecracker. <laughs> it's impossible to identify the strength of a cigar on the first light. It's impossible. I'm a professional. I can do this. <laughs> All right, so when um, you lit up the firecracker before that first light, it was in your face. It was right in your, in face. your face. It was obnoxious. This it is was strong. This I, is punch spice. In the nose. Was yeah. a punch in the nose on the first. This drop. has some spice to it, which you would expect. But with it's not Corojo. that full frontal assault. It's full frontal nudity, <laughs> but it's not full frontal assault. No, it's not a punch in the nose yet. Yeah. Yes. Where that was immediately, but that's what we were looking for. The, the right. immediate pow, boom. That's the signature of the firecracker. Yeah. This is take a cedar box and toss it in the fireplace, and that aroma coming off of it. It's unbelievable. There's, there's very few aromas that are that identifiable. Jonathan, what are you getting on the retro hair? Very flavorful, beautiful cigar. What is with you guys in the friggin' retro hair? Uh, I just. I don't like doing it. it. He's getting a hint of a vomit. A little, little nuttiness on the retro. A little licorice. Black licorice? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm not retro hailing, but I got a little black licorice here. It's uh, definitely enhanced with the uh, retro. Do it my way. Don't do it that way. Hold on. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. If you blew all that out first and then did the, the, the remainder. Then it wouldn't, there wouldn't be smoke coming out of my nose, and you guys would say I'm not doing it. <laughs> Come on. All the cool kids are doing it. No, they're not. You and Ed Sullivan are below the ah, I just cowbell. Did it. I just did it. There's no cough. I just did it. I, I'm going to have to watch the video. He did. I, I saw you. it. Yeah, whatever. Ed Sullivan wouldn't lie. No. Nope. Yeah, he would. No, he wouldn't. He would. If it's no, breaking my balls, he's all in. 
All right, so IPCPR, let's get to it. Uh, made an announcement about their announcement. Yeah. So they tried doing the tease thing. Listen, we're professionals. We do the teasing <laughs> over here. We, we're we known for the teasing. We're professionals in quotes. <laughs> yeah, in quotes, in quotes. We still talk about when we have a good segue. So <laughs> we're not quite there yet. <laughs> Wednesday, 1 o'clock, Facebook announcement, uh, and they put the uh, new guy in charge uh, of IPCPR uh, out there, and there he was sitting at the table and proceeded to do teasing and almost inviting <coughs> somebody like Barry Stein or whatever your last name is to um, go out there and check it out. And again, we knew anyway. But now, how do we tell people without proving it? And um, he got the proof. And, and with all due respect, you knew, but I was never officially let in on that group. Yeah. Because then I would have. Well, we have a whole texting thread where we talk shit right. about you. Then, then, <laughs> I would have, then I would have known to start looking for it. I mean, I can include you in on it, but there's yeah. some hurtful things said. <laughs> yeah. So he, he has this. Um, I don't want anybody to think that you told me. No, like, no. I don't want you to get in trouble. Uh, what, and is he going to get fired? Yeah. And there's, and there's not an in trouble type of thing. I have. Huge respect. Let me start by saying a huge respect for the IPCPR. It is my organization. I'm part of it. I've been part of it since in the 80s. And uh, I served twice on the IPCPR board. And I know every single person that serves on there that it's a thankless, the opposite of thankless. Uh, you, you take all the shit. And you don't get paid. And you use all your time you should be devoting on your own business to give it to them for free as a gift. And I felt obligated to do that because this industry has been so good to me that I said, I have to give back somehow, so let me sign up. I did. I served my first term. I was out. And I was actually happy I was out and then asked to come back in. Uh, can't believe I got the votes to get back in. I went back in and I served the second term and I did my duty. I did the same thing for TAA. And I try to give back because I get a lot out of going sure. to trade shows. Uh, that being said, while being part of that organization, this, these type of things came up. And the type of things that came up is that the IPCPR uh, at the time was RTDA. I was actually in there as RTDA when the changeover came. And there's still a lot of old schoolers in the industry that still refer to it to this day sure. as RTDA. So let me tell you, 1932. The RTDA is formed, 1932. The Retail Tobacco Dealers Association. Retail Tobacco Dealers Association. And with that, when an organization like that is formed, it has a, this is who we are. Right. And because the board changes all the time and people are in and out, you read this so you understand what the founding fathers. It's the mission statement yes, of the organization. This is what it's about, and this is who it's for, and this is who owns it, which is being a member of it, you're part owner of this, this company now. It's a nonprofit, right? Yep. And it has millions of dollars within it. And there's lots of funding and lots of expenses that go in it. And you, nobody, everybody thinks it's a trade show. No, the trade show is... Something they do. Yeah. And a, as a member, you get to go to the trade show. You think your membership is for the trade show. It is not. The trade show is free to you if you're a member. That's how it goes. So 75 years later, I get asked to go on to the board. And I'm there at um, the beginning of the announcement of... It's going to be changed. This is in 2007. It's going to be changed from the Retail Tobacco Dealers Association to the International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers. Now, I was there at the meeting. Why are we changing this after 75 years? And this is our 75th anniversary. And we should be making things with logos on it that say it, you know, that this is who we are. They said, we have a problem with the word tobacco and we have a problem with the word dealers. Dealers has a negative condensation like a drug dealer. It didn't in 1930. It also has a negative connotation. Connotation. It doesn't just have condensation. <laughs> okay. It would be water droplets. <laughs> okay. It has both. <laughs> Um, it's very moist. But we're not about tobacco because tobacco is in cigarettes and tobacco is in chew and tobacco is in other products. Sure. We are the international premium and cigar, premium cigar, cigar and pipe retailers association. So not that I had a vote because, again, I came in at the tail end of this when you have no vote. And uh, I was there as it, but they made sense to it. 
And they made sense also to, here's what the logo is going to be. We're going to take some of the old logo, which was the Cigar Store Indian. We're going to incorporate that in there. Uh, but we, we, we need to tell people who we really are. It's not who, um, we're not drug dealers and we're not uh, about tobacco. We don't source tobacco. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, so I agree. We're a nonprofit. Um, and... Um, even then, remember, I was not on the board until the decision was made. They did not go to the rest of the members. So there, there's, there's, let's say there's 4,000 cigar shops in the country, yep, roughly. Correct. Maybe 3,000 members. Not every cigar shop yep. is a member. So you would expect that they would, with digital media now, you'd be able to reach out to all 3,000 people and poll them poll and them. say, how do you feel about this name change. Yeah. That little Did survey. Did they do that? that li they didn't then, and they didn't this time either. They and did little, send out a survey. Yeah, to ask how my sales were at Christmas time, and um, a, a humidor sales up or down, and how many square feet do I have in my store, and all kinds of personal information about my personal business. Did they ask about, about Uranus? No. <laughs> didn't Just <either>. checking. <laughs> no. Um, That's what we call a tie-in. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Way to make us unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. I'm just joining the crew. So that, that's one thing that I don't think is right because you, they, should, they should have been surveyed to see what, what is thought about this because with the name change, we have a lot of issues now at this point um, that's happening because now it has become the new brand as of the last day of the trade show. It's going to go from IPCPR. We are going mm -hmm. to the IPCPR trade show, but at the end of the trade show, it will become the PCA, the Premium Cigar Association. Oh, I thought it was Politically Correct Association. Mm -hmm. or, or something that puts your dog down, yes. right? <laughs> MSPCA, PCA, MSPCA. And there already is a PCA, the Presbyterian Church of America. Okay. Um, but it's the Premium Cigar Association. So what does that mean as, as you first look at the, the announcement that you made that it's just a name change? No big deal, right? A name change. Well, if you, if you dig into it, it means a lot to me because we told you they took tobacco and dealers out, and I was there, and that's why they took it out. International, they took out. Well, they're not really international. Yes, they are. Yeah, there are a lot of people that come from overseas I'll, to this. Yes, they are. So there's overseas members. Correct. It's a separate membership for the overseas people that are there. You'll see Cigar Journal that'll be there. You see people. You, you still but Cigar Journal gets sold in the United States. Yeah, and and there's there's people from other countries that are there, and lots of them. Um, so international is gone. Um, although they didn't put U.S., they didn't put America or anything. They they left it blank. So at least they didn't um, say international people aren't welcome. There were there were by the way twelve or thirteen. Uh, things that they didn't go with instead of PCA. And I, I have a list, list of those. Maybe we can go over those in the after show. The after show. Save that for the after show. But it's Premium Cigar Association and International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers. International is gone. They kept Premium Cigar and they kept Association, but they left the word pipe out. So what, what's the reason for leaving pipe? Because it's out? less than 5% of the industry. Okay. I'm just I'm spitballing. And, it's, and, and it's probably less than 5% of the industry that's international also. So maybe that's the answer. But, but I, I'm looking at, the, at all at these At the things. trade show, they take up a whole row. Like, they have a section. You know, well, and pipe the, tobacco is dangerous pipe because... There's dealers at the show. Cigarette. The, people, the people I buy cigars from are, are international players. You know, you buy it from a Toro Fuente. You're not buying from a Toro Fuente U.S. The company is overseas. I understand that. But th as far as the pipe thing goes... There's an issue when it comes to roll your own cigarettes. For years, they called that pipe tobacco. So you kind of have to distance yourself from that because that has a negative connotation when you're when you're going into D.C. and you're fighting for cigar rights. You don't want to have any of that shade thrown on you. All right. So what they also haven't said yet is the CRA, Cigar Rights of America, acquisition that along with there's going to be a name change of this organization and that they're going to add a element to the show where consumers will be welcome. Possibly. Absolutely. That's, well, that's their plan right now, yeah. but there could be some serious static Listen, that they hear about. We played it up earlier as we know stuff and we're going to tease a little bit of what we know. So let's come out with it now. Yeah, Cigar say, Con is happening. Cigar Con, it's going to be called. 
Is there going to be a bunch of people dressed up in little Wonder Woman outfits? Hopefully. No, that's Comic-Con. Yeah. Oh, just checking. It is going to be a, it's, it's going to be looked at as a pawn as a consumer event. They left retailer out, and this now is becoming a consumer show. See, there, there are so many consumer events out I know. there. You got the big smoke. You got the two guys anniversary. You got the great smoke. Yeah. You got Cigar Fest. The, the list goes on. Uh, Rocky on. Mountain Cigar Festival. Yeah. The list goes on and on and on. And they on look and at on. these as profitable things and they say, okay, we want to get in on this. I look at upon as now you're stepping into my world. I felt like I owed the IPCPR my free duty to serve on their board, to show up at every trade show, to spend millions and millions of dollars every single show, to do what I got to do because they're an organization that <coughs> helps the retailer. The game's changing now, and I don't know 100% of everything that is, but you are now connecting with the consumer. That's my job. I don't like when manufacturers do it. I don't like when my organization does it. Now you're, you're a consumer event. You become a competition. Do, you're my competition because I want to do the consumer events. You know I do lots of events, and now you're going to be my competition. You're a competition. That's all there is to it. You're stepping out of your boundaries. You're stepping off of the original paperwork that the IPCPR and the RTDA is, and you're becoming something different. Uh, you, um, with the acquisition of CRA... And if that has happened yet, or if it's about to happen, or will they'll announce whatever, whatever they're at, maybe the, the uh, I have no idea of if, if it has happened, but I'm sure that's going to be announced whether it did or not. There's no doubt in my mind that the talks are going on in this thing right. has been ironed out or has not been ironed out. So we'll put that past that, and let's assume it's happening or happened. When you say acquisition, it's, it's is there going to be a happening. buyout? Yeah, they're going to take it on. It's going to be part of that. So it'll be absorbed, not so much yeah. the money is going to transpose between the two organizations. So again, just... I'm not happy with them competing against me. Now, I never thought the CRA competed against me. We are the number one driver to the CRA. We got an award for it. We yep. drive so many consumers mm -hmm. over to that organization. If that now goes to the, uh, the PCA that now is a part of, is is the owner of that they now have the names and addresses of every single person that we drove to them and now they're opening it up to the consumer my competitor they're starting their own thing and i gave them the names and addresses it's crazy i hate it and what a dumb organization of the words by the way cuz they could have done premium association of cigars and they could have been pac pca mm. I think they're trying to steal us, uh, so, our so, logo. So I got, I got this broken down on three different yep. things. The um, retailer, how to, you know, just like any other business that I put together. You I made put a, a SWOT line, analysis. Yeah. So I put a line through the, through the middle of the page, and I got pluses and minuses. The, the, the plus is that it helps the minuses that it hurts. So I'm just, I, I wear a bunch of different hats, right? I'm on the manufacturing end of the business. I'm on the retail side of the business, mm -hmm. and I'm part of the company itself, the IPCPR, I served on the board, I, I donate lots of money to it, I, I give to the PAC, I've given tens of thousands of dollars at a time to that organization. Let's look at the retailers first. I'm a retailer. How does it help the retailer? How does this change help the retail store owner by them changing the name, letting the consumers in? How does it help the retailer at that point? What do you got? All right. For, for one, it's going to help the retailer on the aspect of it'll get better word out about certain products. That so doesn't help be, the retailer. Say, that helps be, the manufacturer. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah but it helps the retailer too because now you have maybe more people aware of certain cigars. That you don't carry? You, you would hope that you carry them. How that, can you carry everything? You can't carry everything, but right now the like, – Doing a great we, job, Barry. Right You're, now there's a product coming out. Not everybody knows about it until it shows up on the shelves. When it shows which, up on the shelf, which gives you better, I'll, I'll get the word out. Which gives you better control, but it's the same reason why the media was there. You want to help promote the industry. That's there, what the media is for. There will and that's be manufacturers. Some, there will be some promotion from the consumer that could help the industry as a whole. I have but that, I think that is. I have so, that on the hurt. Yeah, Barry's I, making a great argument. Just I think for the wrong that side. Is, I think that is so small. Compared to the issues that there will be. If you look at the trade show next year, it starts on a Saturday. 
So that Saturday, that first day, will be consumers allowed into the show. Anybody that's going to the Vegas on Saturday is going to turn it into a weekend or they're going to turn it into a oh. vacation. 25 to 50% of a retailer's sales happen, uh, purchases happen during the trade show. So you got the, you're got you going to have the show floor And the bulk open. of that is the first day, which is now consumers and no sales. Right. Now the second day will be the first day. Um, Everybody's going to be on the top of their game But then, they're right? there for four hours. They'll be allowed to see the show floor for four hours, which is the, the current rumor. But they're not going to leave Vegas. No. So how many deals are worked out either at Circle Bar, at Casa Fuente, at various restaurants? You're oh, talking about people who are buying so on deal. You're talking about consumers. No, no the consumers are going to be there. We're talking about the retailers. So this you're on the because, negative. Because you're on the negative. I'm on the negative. because First, have the first I want to say, what do you got that's good for the retailer? What's good for the retailer? Only a little bit more promotion about products. All right. I got nothing. So I'll make it easy for you. There's nothing, and I've spent three days on this now trying to put this thing together and say, what good is it for me, David, from Two Guys Cigars, what is, what is this move letting the consumers in there going to help me? I got nothing. And if I have to count on the IP, the PCA to get the word out of what's on my shelf. Mm. I might as well shut down. I'll take care of this. Is marketing and promoting my but retail you were, business. You were pro media back in the day. Media. They're not the media. No, but media was promoting products that may or may not be on your you know, shelf. You know, you go into a restaurant that makes a good good burger, and they have fifty things on the menu. Yeah. Most likely, everything else is terrible. Right? They're, they're too many things. Frankly, the IPCPR ain't doing anything great. Right? They're doing nothing. They're not doing great. Le even legislation they're, they're great. We're losing great. Mo we're losing almost everything, right? And now they're gonna be in charge of the media for the cigar industry? Just take care of the legislation or whatever you gotta take right, care of. Right, let the retailer the take show. care of the retailer. Please don't help me with yeah. this. It's like when the government wants to step in and deal with my health care. Please. You can't even yeah. run the post office right. Just deal with what you got to deal with, and don't jump into my space, which is what they're doing when it comes to the media or whatever. Let me get into some hurts and yeah. add whatever you got to add in here. Consumers are already involved in the discussion. You're involving the consumer in the discussion of sales that are happening. You're bringing them in early, which means they can say to me, Dave, you should take on such and such a brand. There's a reason why I don't take a certain brand. Right. They don't know the back end of what, what's happening in the Correct. business. There's some retailers that don't even know how to run their own business. Correct. Do not bring the consumer. I, I know the bulk of everybody listening to the show. I, I can't involve you in my day-to-day -day business of how I'm operating my, my thing. It would all due respect. I love you, and I can't operate without you. Right. But not the back end, please. Right. You ha you are the one who knows what's best for your and, business. And I, and you ever want to <clears throat> sit down with me and have a cigar? I'm happy to discuss anything you want with me. It's it's lengthy. It's 34 years yep. of information why I make a decision I make. Yep. The lost half a day that they took away from us. On the manufacturing side, for the smaller manufacturers that I really care about, because we need new smaller manufacturers for the IPCPR to survive, because acquisitions and people go out of business, just like a retail store, you need new customers. They need new customers. You take the half a day away, let me tell you, most of these little guys survive because of that last half day. That's how they, that's how they pay for the As trip. As a buyer, Jonathan, of course. We, we go around for the first three days running around to take care of all the business we have to take care of. I drop a million dollars at that trade show. Right. I go around taking care of everything I have to take care of, and then we go around to the little guys that we don't know. Right. Well, we're not going to have the time to go see around the little guys we don't know, so that guy's not going to end up getting our dollars along with hundreds of other people that do the same thing. Right. The PCA has taken eight hours the first day. And giving it to retailers. But in turn, they've only given four hours back to the retailers by extending that. You're saying length. retailers too many times. By, you need consumers. Right. So they've, they've taken away eight hours for the consumers to give to the consumers. Yeah. And they take that eight hours away from the retailers because you're now losing that Lost. chance to sell. They're extending the and last. And I can't even do business with them off the show floor they're because they got them more retailers. Yep. So they're extending the last day by four hours instead of being at a half day. It'll be a full day. Day. Retailers are losing a net of four hours at the trade show. Losing eight. They're losing more than that because losing a whole day and night. You, you and take longer. you take consumers and you jam them into the circle bar. No one's no one's doing any selling right. so, after hours. So when it was small and there would still be consumers that found their way to the show, and I worked on the manufacturer side, 
you'd sit down at the circle bar at, the, at that time. That was the big spot, circle bar and the, the wine bar uh, that was uh, set up at yeah, a square. Whatever. And you would have some of the big retailers come over and continue the conversation that they had during the show. And I've seen $50,000 orders, $75,000 orders written I'm over oper- drinks. I'm operating 18 hours a day at that trade show. So you're, Working 18 so, hours a day. So you now have consumers there. You're preventing that sale from being can't, written. It can't happen. I've seen it You know when it was so small back in, back in the day of, retail, of consumers going – you know, I'd be sitting at the bar, and I'd be with with Guillermo Leone. I, I'd be with Benuela Noah, Jason Wood, Heck the Paz. Did and, you work for Miami Cigar? And we'd be with a retailer, and then there's a consumer there, and the consumer's telling this guy, you shouldn't carry that cigar. That's bad for everybody. Yeah. The, the, the consumer should not be dictating, and the consumer should have the better wherewithal not to get involved in business. Well, you're also putting the consumer in the manufacturer together mm-hmm. not a good idea even to the manufacturer and they're not going to say it out loud folks but they need to talk to the buyers even when multiple people from a company go one of them has the buyer logo on yep and the other well, people have they associates got rid of that. big mistake because the 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 final decision maker is what matters there's only so many hours in a day that they can deal with all these people and they got to get to the person that's going to make the decision and on the on the back end of me standing at a booth that I would be talking to somebody and spend a half hour with them it's a, it's a long period of time that you're spending with one person oh let me end up checking with the, with the buyer i don't make these decisions what the hell am I talking to you for? Yeah, why Nothing are you here? It, 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 and now I got to go through the same exact thing, and I don't have enough hours. Now you've taken another half a day and every night away. Mm-hmm. Not just the first night, by the way. Those guys are going to stay in town, and every night is 100%, gone. 100%. Especially night. being on a Saturday. Yeah. You're going to have them at least Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And every you're going to have at least 50% of them turning it into a vacation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be no talk behind I've closed. seen multiple manufacturers post that their booths are not designed Correct. to accommodate consumers. Absolutely. Um, putting um, the the manufacturers who actually go direct to consumer anyway, the ones that own the catalogs and the big mail out mail order companies. Oh, yes. Now you're putting my consumer, all our consumers, directly in contact with them. And if things aren't bad enough for brick and mortar retailers, you have our organization that we funded that the retailers built, mm-hmm. and now you're handing it over. Look at what, look at the end use, and that's now just talking about the retailer and the um, the retailer plus and minuses. Now let's go to the manufacturer. What good is this for the manufacturer? Why is it good? It allows them to do direct to consumer sales. Absolutely, it allows them to raise their bottom line. Yep, uh, and also to get the consumer to ask for their product to the. Brick, to yeah. the brick and mortar retailer. So the first day they go and they say, wow, that packaging looked good, this looked good. Mm-hmm. Thing. And then they go to the, because the ask is the big thing. Right. A lot of retailers say, yeah, I don't carry that brand. Nobody's asking. Well, now you're going to have a bunch of people asking. Mm-hmm. And it's going to dictate partially to the retailer. And if the retailer says, no, I'm not doing it, now the consumer thinks badly of them. I, I told yep. you to take this product on. Why didn't you do it? You don't know their back end. You don't know the problems of why they're not going to do business with this company, why they choose not to. And a lot of mistakes are going to happen, that people are going to be buying the wrong products that aren't going to yep. be right for their store. So what is It's a the- relationship business. So the manufacturer builds a relationship, spends that first day wisely, and builds a relationship with a few key consumers from a few key shops. And now they own that shop. All right. Let me rattle down here because we're going to run out of time why I think it hurts the manufacturer. The manufacturer works hard on day one and gets burnt out for the first selling day. It's like the day of the Super Bowl that they got to play a Super Bowl before the Super Bowl. So they're not going to be on their best game. If you've ever seen day two at a trade show, these people are wrecked from the night before. Retailers can't place an order on the best and busiest day. The best and busiest day is the first day, and it's a consumer day. Right. Everybody's Reta- bright eyed and bushy tail. Yeah. Retailers can't buy on the half day, as we talked about. The cost to the manufacturer, it costs them even more because the cigars, the employees, and the booth space, they have to change their booth space. They're now going to have to show off to the consumer that I'm big and beautiful. We, we don't want you to think we have this little table or something. Right. They're going to actually have to step it up. Right. So not to be embarrassed. So now they're going to have to pay more money, which in turn is going to be more expensive cigars. 
Uh, and it's also going to hurt the, cons- the manufacturer because, you know, somebody on the board saying it won't be trick-or-treat, that you you would be getting a pack of cigars or a bag of cigars before you went into We don't the know that answer. We don't know that. But based upon, let's say, what he's saying is truthful, if a manufacturer gives a cigar that's a $5 cigar and there's another company in there that's given a $12 cigar, right. you're now looking as a yeah. cheap company. If you ain't getting, as a consumer, if you ain't getting the new cigar that everybody's talking about, you're bummed out anyway. Right. And you're that's not, all you want. And you're not going to get it because chances are those cigars aren't ready. I spoke last <laughs> night to Guardian of the Farm Night Watch. It was still young. The trade show's two weeks away. It's yeah. not going to improve by the time with no. the trade show. So they can't give out that cigar. Plus, a lot of times the cigar you smoke at the trade show is different than the of finished course. product. And, and, and they're not educated enough to understand Stand, what that exactly. is. Exactly. If purchasing happens, and that could even be with the bag of cigars, if it's not the trick-or-treat version, mm-hmm. it happens. Nexus could happen at that point. Mm-hmm. Because a sale did happen on their product, and it's going to be a thing for legal legal minds to make this decision, but the state may go after that. Mm-hmm. Um, must manufacturers um, will, will manufacturers must interact with the consumer at that point that are going to look like dirt bags. Yeah. And off the record, a lot of manufacturers don't want to do it. Yeah, they and told I, me. Yeah, and I'm going to say it too. That was something I wanted to go off on big time. Throughout Miami, I am not naming one single company. I'm not naming the company I work for. I'm not naming company A, B, C, or D. But there are manufacturers out there that badmouth the consumers being uneducated, badmouth the consumers always wanting something for free, badmouthing the com- custom, uh, the consumer for not being socially um, acceptable, for lack of a better word. But it's the same manufacturers at the same time blast the members of the media. They go off on me. They go off on uh, blog A, blog C. Blog, and then at the show, they're kissing that blogger's ass. Yeah. Stop being two-faced. Wow. It, it's put your th- foot down and say this is the way it's going to be and that's it it's the consumer and they're the end user and they're going to yeah. do they're going to do that as ed mentions the boot design it must change things have to be locked up mm-hmm. if you think it's bad with a couple of bad retailers mm-hmm. grabbing stuff fast forward five thousand mm-hmm. consumers going in there mm-hmm. destroying the place what if the dis- what if they uh and I'm, i'll get to that what, what they can end up doing to the uh P- PCA in a second, um, and the after hours, the next day, um, they're not going to leave, as, as we talked about. Right. So it is the bad that's mm-hmm. going to happen. So now let's look at the PCA itself. What good and bad can happen with the PCA? So for the PCA to be saying what we want this to happen, it's an important thing to say, what, why <clears throat> are they doing it? What's the upside? Obviously, money. Follow the money. Every yeah. single time. They're going to make more money via consumers. Yeah. Follow the money. That is the number one reason. And I think they're going to come right out and say, this is going to help us make more money. Yeah. Again, it's a nonprofit organization for right. the retailers. It's going to hurt the retailer, but they're going to make more right. money. Right. And this is one way they it could can... also help the manufacturer to a degree. If there's more money coming in, the manufacturers donate a lot to the fight. They're not going to donate less. They're not going to ask if, for less. If, if the if the it's if just, the company just like taxes. if the company's entering let's let's fictitious numbers if the company's operating or operating a hundred thousand dollars in the red, manufacturers and retailers have to step up to help pay for the legal fight and all that. By taking some money from the consumers, it reduces the amount oh, of red. So unless oh, please unless the manufacturers now back out. And then your net loss, you're losing more money. It's more money no matter what. So every time a tax goes up in the state, that means we pay less, right? Well, there'll be less they'll be asking. Tolls will probably go down if taxes go up in the state. Tolls go up too. Everything goes up. It never goes down. And it's not going to be less. It's going to be more. It's going to be more boot space. It's going to be more ask. And it's going to be more everything. Right. Boot spaces are going and up that's next on neg- year. And that's next on year negative. going up 3%. So let's talk about positives. Because you got to try to put the positives and negatives. It's so easy to just say negatives and no positives that happen. Some manufacturers want this to happen. so And I guarantee you it's the smaller manufacturer and the biggest manufacturers. Because they, the medium guys a few, don't want it. There's a few manufacturers that sit on the board of the advisory yeah. board part of the committee. Again, I know how this whole thing yeah. works. And if, for this thing to end up passing, that means there wasn't a pushback. It never passed when I was on the board. Yeah. I was very, very vocal 
of why this shouldn't happen, and this thing ends up going through. So some manufacturers want it to happen, and the, and the organization itself says we can make more money. Um, if they did take on the CRA, now they actually have a way to promote this to the consumer. Right. How's the consumer going to find out about this? We're certainly not going to promote it on the Cigar Authority. Well, except for this entire show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, or are they going to buy advertising? i got to imagine if they bought advertising in Cigar Aficionado, they're not going to run the ad either. Well, because there's the competition big, with them. Big smoke in Las yeah. Vegas. Right. They're just actually stealing their whole thunder. Yep. Um, it's going to build a show. More people are going to show in room blocks. So room blocks is something as they're building the show. They say to the the, the, the hotel uh, yeah. and the convention center, we're going to guarantee you 20,000 room nights. Right. And you're going to get $200 a night, and you're going to make all this money, and for that, you're going to charge us this amount for the show. Mm -hmm. The more the room block, the less of the cost is going to go there because we're paying for that also, mm -hmm. every person that goes to the show. So it's going to bring that down. Again, follow the money. On the negative stuff, it's a bad time of the year, I think, for everybody, including the consumer. Mm -hmm. As bad as I say it is for us, mm -hmm. the consumer, to go... During the summertime here in New England, that finally we got to and go yeah. into the heat of 115 degree temperature in Las Vegas. I don't know and pay to do it. Yeah, thousands of dollars that's going to cost you. I don't know. Um, this was a retail organization. It is now not. And the CRA, when it comes to that, honestly, and I love the CRA for the things they do and everything, and I help support it the best I can and promote it. And we have done more than everything else. A financial failure. They counted on the consumers to actually fund this organization. It was put together as a consumer organization. There's more funding going on on manufacturers than anything else. They're funding that also. Yep. And now it's going to be part of um, PCA. And if it is part of PCA, who's going to fund it? Yeah, the manufacturers, again. The consumer and only cares about the cigar. They don't care about the fight. Cigar Con. And that's a problem. Cigar Con doesn't even have a website. No. It's already owned by somebody else. In, in Staten Island. <laughs> they don't even own the website. They did not do their homework in advance of these things. Yeah. The consumer's behavior could actually ruin everything that happens. On day one, if the consumer is smoking in the lobby, all these rules that happen, you're gonna control, yeah. you can control the retailer to some degree that you're not part of the organization, you're in the business, you're not going to do the foolish things. Add 5,000 consumers who don't give a shit what they do, right. what they break, standing in front of signs that say no smoking areas yeah. with their middle finger up and shit like this is going to happen. The next thing you know, they're going to throw the whole organization out of Las Vegas. This is the bad that could yeah. really happen here. The, the consumer could ruin the entire organization day one of the first opening day. You think you control them? I've been in retail for 34 years. Can we control the consumer? No. Good friggin' luck with that. Um, the PCA may be uh, considered retailers' competition, as I said. Some retailers and manufacturers will pull out. I'm here. I'm calming everybody down. As much as it seems like I'm on my soapbox and I'm stirring the shit, let me tell you, those that are on IPCPR right now listening to the show, I'm doing quite the opposite. I'm trying to calm everybody down and say, let's wait till we get there, hear all the details, and see what's going to end up going on. But what we know this is the information of what I know where I stand right now, but manufacturers and retailers are putting together groups of people that say, let's, let's do this all at once so it really hurts. We're not here to try to hurt our organization. We're trying to here to help the organization, and that's why things are being said at this point. I'm saying you're pulling this off like a Band-Aid. I hope some thought has been into this, and we'll hear those thoughts there at the, at the um, event. Um, and when the no-smoking thing happens there, no smoking in this area, and they do it, and they take over, 5,000 people take over and smoke there, game over. Correct. And now try to put the horse back in the barn. Try to get this thing back to a retailer's organization after you ruined it. This might be over, and if I was TPE, I'd be looking at this with TPA a big smile. TPA is the big winner in all of oh this. Oh, my God, they must be smiling, saying, you jackasses, uh -huh. what are you doing? Did you think, did you think this out? I hope you did. But I don't think you did. No. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm dying to hear it. If you look at every consumable trade show out there, I mean, you were just at the Candy Expo. How yeah. many consumers were there? None. 
And there was media there. We went yeah. as media. There wasn't a consumer thing. Yeah. And big deals were happening. And we were nice enough, me and Ed, when, when a big mm-hmm. deal was going on. Big deals were going on there of people getting tractor trailers of friggin' Walmart buying yeah. this new candy thing. We back right off. Yeah. And I'll say the same thing to media. There was a lot of pushback on media, yeah. and I'm the one that pushed it forward. And the media ended up, they know their place, and they know to back off. Thankfully, when businesses- thankfully the issue with the media members that did not belong there worked itself out. Those yeah. sites did not stay up. They, they realized that it wasn't what they expected with free cigars. You don't think there's going to be bad apples in the consumer end of this? Oh, no, totally. Oh, I totally. God. I'm not arguing it in defense of the consumer. And I would say this. 99% of the people who listen to the Cigar Authority and care about this industry and stuff are going to be smart enough and, and, and educated enough to know to back off and yeah. not get in the middle of somebody's major purchases well, and things for the year for their business. But there's going to be some jackasses that are going to ruin it for everybody. Yep. And if you think you can, you can control, you can't control seven media companies that are out there, and you think you can control 5,000 consumers, good luck with that. It's going to be the longest show ever because that was supposed to be a 20-minute segment. It is. So let's before we go to break, what do you think of Aroa Yamastron Robusto before uh, and, and try to take the bitterness out, out of my mouth from <laughs> blabbing all this thing because I well, listen, I, it means everything to me. This at, is everything at, at to the me. end of the day. You and I are on the same page. I, I might see that there is a small benefit to a consumer help getting the word out. Help me, help, but, help but, me understand that. But at the end of the day, we don't have that kind of time at the no. end. At the, After the show. at the end of the day, I do not believe consumers belong at a selling convention or a buying convention. Yeah. If you took a Fig Newton and you smoked it slow and low, that's what I'm getting out of this. It's a smoked Fig Newton. Wow. It's um, heavy char, heavy char, um, meaty, smoky though, mm-hmm. smoky, meaty. And then the sweet from the Fig Newton. I don't, I don't know what the sweet, there, there's cedar sweetness. Yeah, I don't got no Fig. That's a double negative, which means you do have fig. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you get, getting know. my back on that. I, I get the taste of nostalgia. You know, it's yeah. rare yeah. when somebody brings something back that it really seems the same. Yeah. And I think they nailed this one. My lips are tingly. It's nice. When we come back, uh, there'll be a new cigar organization. Will retailers and manufacturers be pulling out of the 2020 show? That and lots more. T-minus seven days until the next explosion, a.k.a. the Cigar Trade Show. There's a lot of changes going on. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. 
Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. This is Eric Newman from the J.C. Newman Cigar Company, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. We're back. We're smoking the Aroa Yamastron Robusto 5x50 as we prepare for changes in the cigar industry. I got a cinnamon That's, spice. So I want to I want to bring up the consumer. Yeah. Because I am a consumer. I don't own a shop anymore. Yeah. Um, granted, I work here. Yeah, we talked about the retailer, the manufacturer, and the organization itself. So the pluses and minuses when it comes to the consumer. You know, I can understand why the consumer wants to be there. Of course. I can also understand why people want to smoke Cuban cigars. It's taboo. Yeah. Like, you're not allowed to sell them here in the U.S., and as a consumer, you weren't allowed to go to IPCPR. Yeah. So the and curtain's co- finally being pulled back. And the consumer's like, oh, I want to see this. I see the pictures every year on the Cigar Authority and other sites. As you should. Sites. Listen, I, I don't have a plus and minus on this because there's no minus to you, the consumer. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the plus and minus is for the individual. What's the minus uh, from you going to the show? So it's I, hot. I and, am a consumer. Yeah. And What's the negative my, to you? To me? Nothing. You Las, don't go if you don't no, want to. No, but Las Vegas <coughs> is a horrible place to smoke cigars. 
right? So yeah. if you say, I want to try the new stuff. It's not going to taste good there because right. it's so dry, yes. The cigars probably aren't ready to be sold. Yeah. So what you're getting may not even be what the cigar will be. But finally, I'd rather buy 10 or 20 boxes of cigars I like mm-hmm. than spend all the money to go out there. Yeah. But they get- want to look. So in an expo. If this is what this is going to be, right? This right. is going to be a convention. They should have called it an expo, right? Because yep. it's an exhibition Yes. To, to go look at it. That's a different thing where you're going to walk around and look at the new things and care about it. We went to the, the Candy Convention Expo. It was an it exposition, was an expo, yeah. right? Uh, there was selling going on, but it was an ex- exposition to be able to see mm-hmm. these things. They had little samples out and things if you wanted it. Uh, the consumer goes there. I think they get disappointed not scoring the hard-to-get cigar. Correct. Um, and um, other than that, the negative thing and, and the cost associated with it, but they get to see it, and it's the Super Bowl of cigars, and if they want to go see it, they should see it. And, I, and if I was a consumer, and I was a consumer and, and still consume, I would want to see it too. It's very interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be cost-effective because let's say you're flying from New York to Vegas you're looking at a, a four hundred fifty. Yeah, it's going to cost flight. you thousands of dollars. Right, you're looking at two hundred plus a night in a hotel yeah. unless you stay somewhere off site. But then you got to include Uber, so you're talking two hundred dollars a night. Then you're talking going out to eat. thousands of dollars. Uh, if it's the same price as the uh, the the aficionado event, the big smoke, it's three and a quarter a ticket. Then you're looking at three hundred dollars yeah, plus for it's a ticket. Thousands. You're going to be spending fifteen hundred dollars minimum, and you're going to be getting back about one hundred and eighty dollars worth of cigars. Yeah. So, listen, I don't want to tell you not to go. Go go if you want, you're consuming, you want to go. I'm breaking this down on each thing. So there's not a lot of negative to you if you want to go and you want to spend that money and go and have a great time and, and see this thing. I'm trying to break it into each, each individual's things. As the positive thing of you going to the show, you're going to see these new products. And you get to you, meet you, all the cigar liberties. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly some cachet to be able to hang out with someone like Skip Martin or Steve Saka. Right, they're, the guy that lives in there. the middle of Iowa that never yeah. gets to see these meet people. Meet George Padron. And, and you may have one of those little stores that these guys don't show up at the store right. often and stuff. And it, the, these are all the positive that happen. Sing and, the donut song to Jose Dominguez if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Which he'd lo- love to hear that. He loves to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's, it, listen, I'm not beating up the consumer. This has everything to do with the organization as it stands now. Because that's the I'm, hat you have to wear when you evaluate this. You're, you're not saying yes, Dave not, personally. The consumer is, isn't in there. If the consumers had already been in there, I could give you a plus and a negative to, to what the consumer, as the change would take them away. Right. It's going to affect the retailer, manufacturer, and the organization because they already exist right now. Of the manufacturer, they don't exist in there, and, I, and I'm leaving them out. I'm talking to the consumer. I deal with the consumer every single day. I love the consumer. Mm-hmm. Consumer, the only reason why I come to work every single day is you. It's no other reason. I'm not coming here because of the manufacturer. I'm not coming here to work every single day and and do this show. It's all about the consumer. That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the trade show where I have to put that hat on and it's time to buy. I have a buyer. That That's the, the person's job. Ed Santa Maria is the buyer for two guys. Cigars, that's what he does exclusively mm-hmm. no he does a lot of other things but that's his he, he his, wears many hats yeah. he does but, everything but but his main thing that's what he has to end up doing with the exception of when the trade show happens i'm by his side because we we you guys balance more, each other out and we spend more than a million dollars in three days when you walk into a booth by yourself the manufacturer's beyond happy because you're buying everything imagine buying <laughs> when a, ed walks into the booth with you they're like oh man his leash is here Imagine buying four hundred thousand dollars, buying a, a high, a, a nice house every day <laughs> while you're at the trade yeah. show. Now you cut a day away from it for me. So there's another four hundred thousand. Maybe I can't end up spending. And then some deals that are happening at nighttime at the bar and stuff that goes away. Take that away from me and stuff. My buying is going to slow down because I just don't have the time to end up doing it. Or what they try to do is we don't want you to do these buying in advance of the trade show happening. So is it safe to say from a business? So let me finish yes. this. Then they're, they're not, they don't want us to make these deals before the trade show happens. Th- these deals and promotions, we want them to happen at the trade show. Well, now you just made the trade show even shorter mm-hmm. And you don't want these deals to happen. It's going to be less dollars that are going to it's go. It's more than 15 miles of aisleways that you have to walk. 
You have to and walk. They, and they're going to have the consumer, you heard, four or five hours or something, they're going to have to do it. Cause it takes can't me, be done. Because it takes me four right. days. Right. can't be done. It takes me four you days. Can't get, you from, can't from get to I'm, the main players in that amount of time. From what I'm hearing, the, 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 the consumer portion will be four or five hours long. And, they're gonna, and if they end up housing it off to the big players, it's going to mm. be so unfair to the little guy yeah. that's not going to have it if they're going to put these big guys. So just say from a business standpoint... You don't like the fact that your your interaction as a retailer is going to be reduced and limited because of outside um, people. But from a personal standpoint, you really have no issue with the consumer in general. I don't go to the big smoke and right, the other things because it, I don't belong there. Right. So I, I stay away because I don't belong there, and they're trying to meet and greet and talk to these people. Mm. If I go there, and I'm in that crowd with you, the consumer, right. and I go up to somebody's booth. You're getting into a half-hour conversation. Oh, my God. But I'm going to tell you that they're going to walk away from you, mm -hmm. and they're going to come to me. Not because I'm a nicer guy, right. because I spend a lot of money with these mm. companies. And the, the, it's gonna, they're going to walk away. From the consumer, which I don't want them to do. It's a consumer thing. And they're going to walk away from them, and they're going to come over to me because I'm going to dump a lot of my day. What can I get you? And they're yeah. going to kiss my ass because I'm going to spend a lot of money, and the consumer's going to buy maybe a box of cigars or maybe not. They're going to go to the next booth. I don't interrupt that. And listen, you're going, and it's going to be on, on a different day. Thank God it's a different day. Yep. Actually, thank God. Imagine if it was during the whole thing and say the consumer can come. Uh, if while it was the whole day, it would be the end of the, 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 the buying and the selling that would have to be done elsewhere. And as I'm talking negative yeah. of the bad apples that are going to end up doing it, we have this in our industry too. It's by sitting on the board that you'd hear these horror stories of the bad retailer that was going in there and, and taking the a box of cigars out of the booth that was on display that yeah. was glued together yep. and, and they just steal it yeah. and whatever and they try to push these guys out there's going to be, <coughs> it's a game of numbers right? So you end up having a thousand retailers that are there and five thousand consumers and we had ten bad apples in the, in the retailers, that means you're going to have fifty bad apples when it comes to. Right, and the bad apples spoils the bunch Yeah and, and that's what we're going to have. Listen, I hope I'm wrong on every single thing I'm yep. saying, and this thing ends up shining mm -hmm. because I'm in the organization, and I'm not making a decision to pull from the organization. I'm part of it. I've been there since the 80s, and it means everything to me, and I want this industry to prosper. I want the consumers to love the product. Uh, everything I want to end up being to a positive. Mm -hmm. We're just being on our soapboxes today mm -hmm. to share our Issues with what Our we concerns, have here. Right. And I like the idea of saying this before the trade show so that maybe trade show people hear this. Yep. And instead of uh, a, a three minute conversation that I get to have with them about yeah. my griefs, that here we, we got in our own platform, we got an hour yep. to bitch and complain or say what we think of what it is. And maybe they clean up some of this yep. stuff and say, oh, or, you know, oh, I didn't think of that. Because I know serving on the board, I would bring something up and the people on the board would say, wow, I didn't think of that. Yep. I know what happens at two guys. That yeah. I have an idea of a promotion mm -hmm. I'm doing, and then Jonathan comes in and says, how about this? Or, Barry, you've done it to mm -hmm. me too. How about this? And I go, oh, my God, I haven't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Scrap the whole thing. Look, if this thing goes off as planned and the retailer goes, we hope you have a great time. Of consumer. Uh, the consumer. We mm -hmm. hope you have a great time. We hope it's everything you expect it to be. And as retailers, we're hoping it's everything that, it, that we don't want it to be, that we want it to be too. We don't want it to be a nightmare. And that's really the issue. I don't. I don't want. That's this really the issue that we're trying to I don't want to this organization to crash and burn. Right. That's and, really what we're trying it, to relate. And here. if I was an insurance company and look at this, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't wouldn't take your insurance money right. because it's not a good bet here. Yeah. Something bad's going to happen. It looks to me, as we understand mm -hmm. it right now, mm -hmm. something really bad could happen here. This they, they're rolling the dice here. I know we're in Las yeah. Vegas, but you're taking a gamble and a half in Las Vegas. And, and let me tell you something: the odds aren't on our, our side right no. now. No. With that in mind, it's time to take a peek into the asylum with our good friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha-ha! It's time for news from the Insane Asylum, odd and sometimes historic news stories, that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. 
Asylum cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum cigars. The FDA has issued a warning about a surgery to treat E. difficile colitis. The surgery, referred to as a poop transplant, takes fecal matter from a healthy patient and transfers it into the sick patient in order to create antibodies to cure the disease. This was considered a safe procedure until a string of deaths caused the warning. Why we know a joke about death might be too soon, we couldn't pass up this shitty situation, and that's not only insane, it's asylum. And it's true? It's true. And if you're a healthy person, you can actually donate poop for about $40 a movement. I mean, <laughs> you get $40? $40. I can make 120 bucks a day. You get can poop, poop on a good day. Plant, legitimate operation. Do I just freeze it and mail it? Uh, that I don't know. You know, your body needs bad bacteria. Right. It needs good bacteria, whatever it is. Some yeah. kind. Yeah. We had a big um, fish thing across the street, a koi pond. Remember the koi pond? Oh, that was, yeah. was built into the humidor. Is this another and, coin story? <laughs> and the, the fish kept dying. And we had all kinds of clean things and all this stuff. And then we went and saw... Um, the fish doctor? Yeah, a fish doctor thing, <laughs> for lack of a better word. He said, throw some coins in there, it'll dirty it he up? He said, Get, put these things in there that actually the bacteria will form on this bag of furry stuff will happen, and the bacteria will be there and leave that in the water and leave this bacterial bag of bacteria in there. And that was it. Clean, cleaned everything up. It needed bacteria. Your body needs bacteria. It just the fish needed you to stop pouring Clorox into the water. <laughs> yeah. Can <laughs> we uh, take a? <laughs> was it consumers throwing the uh, cigars in the water? Was oh, that what no, it? no, <laughs> no. Uh, it's time to hear from our friends at Don Raphael Cigars right now. Brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, how much? Pool cue. I get a pool cue. How far and how deep does uh, Jonathan? <laughs> does this have, have to, to do with it? Uranus? I want to break it on your side. Side of your body, swing it, boom, and does it, until it breaks. Can it be the front? You got floating ribs. You could break a floating rib. I could die. You'd rather it in the front? Yeah, I could take it like on the, <laughs> on the abs. All right. Just hold my hands up, and you're holding the small end, right? And you're going to line the middle of the queue up with my belly button. Okay. And just swing away. <laughs> okay. I'm up for that. And how much? 100 bucks. <laughs> I'd probably do that. Really? I'd probably do that. Yeah, it'd be like a caning to him. He would love it. I can break something. Well, what if it doesn't you can't break? Swing it it doesn't like, you can't the... swing it like a bitch. You've got to follow through oh, on of this. Of course. <laughs> I would consider this. I'd have to see you swing a pool cue first because you, you haven't swung anything in a long time. This is a... Uh, have you the, practiced on Barry a couple times? This is a nice YouTube thing. If you subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel, I think we put this up and we get some... We go viral. So let me ask you a question. Are you going to choke the cue or are you not going to choke gonna the cue? I'm going to choke it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to put the whole show on and everything. <laughs> And then I'll I'll aim I'll, I'll check it out you know like because you, you'd be swing. you'd be tempted to pull back a little bit out no, of I fear won't. no I won't <laughs> and then no then you're gonna hurt that me. no I'll go full swing I'll it's swing, gotta be swing full swing you. you just gotta hope when he swings he's not swinging at a breaking ball that's low and away because ah gonna catch the, the breaking ball. I mean I could probably <laughs> that's what you'd want to do cover my nuts then it's gonna hit my <laughs> forearms though because you've got shitty aim. I'm out. I'm out. You're going to hit me in the nuts on purpose. Come on, for the show. I would. Do this for the show. Take a shot to the nuts for 100 bucks. I'm, I'm good. We're looking for more subscribers on YouTube. If I put this up, this could be... This could let make, let me run my foot over with a, with a car or something. Almost. First. He was out in the parking lot. We thought about it, but that was a big car. I don't care that we're running late. I want to do the classic three-way. Why? Because I like it. Did you study? Is that what's going no, on I here? No, just, I just like it. What's an extra five minutes? All right, go ahead. Amongst friends. And maybe they'll think less of... Uh, because that, are you getting texts and things that Dave hates the retailer. I love the retailer. The consumer. The consumer. The consumer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love the retailer, too. I love the retailer. I love the consumer. I love this industry. I love this industry. And I don't want something bad to happen to it. And I look at this, and I'm getting scared. I, I've been hearing about it for the longest time. When the thing, it, it was almost like hearing it for the first time. I knew all this thing was going on, but it really happened. And then I'm like, oh, my God, this could be it. You know, it was like when FDA first came, and I knew that was coming up, too. I go, it's going to kill us. FDA is going to kill us. And I'm still worried it's going to kill us. And this one, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Please tell me what you're thinking at the at the air. And 
as I say, uh, we weren't invited as the um, as the media. Yeah, for whatever reason that is, but you you ended up getting the text yeah, on the show. Yeah, you ended up getting at five forty this morning. I missed it, but it was there. But there'll be enough talk, and I'll, I'll be talking to enough people. And if, and if this didn't spawn the um, IPCPR to hear my griefs, they heard them anyway. Yeah, do do something. Hey, they're going to come out and they're going to announce that that cigar con is not going to happen. That the cigar authority had the wrong information. We are there out. If they change their mind because of what everybody's saying, they can blame us for putting out the wrong I, information. Listen, put, put it that it's, we, we, we messed up, and I'll say I'm sorry. Geez, we blew that one, and it goes away. Wouldn't yeah. that be? Um, or, or in a different, a different time, a different yeah. thing. Hey, their leak might have been on purpose. You know, let's play Captain Conspiracy here. The guy that reached out to me with the uh, information uh, could have been a stooge for... IPCPR. S- listen, Cigar Con is trademarked. Yeah. They trademark. But let's put it out there it's and happening. see how people react. Can we do the friggin' three way for uh, Christ's sake? All right, this classic three way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. I tell anyone about this, I'll f-ing kill you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In classic history. He is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic and Every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the Classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the Classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com, that's... Two guys cigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. The uh, Cameroon's back in stock, by the way. Commercial has been wrong for a little while. Cameroon's back in stock. Ah, um, and it is now less than $3 a stick, no matter where you buy it, in store or online. I'm loving this cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's really starting the, the flavor bomb that's going on and not overpoweringly killing me. I'm loving it. Okay, today's June 22nd. And uh, Ed Sullivan is I the champion. Think so. Ed Sullivan's the champion. Mary Louise Strep. The lady who invented strep throat? No, Streep? Streep. Marilyn Streep? Marilyn? Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep is an American actress, often described as the best actress in her generation. Streep is particularly known for uh, um, accents and. Uh, Steel Magnolias, was she in that? She's in everything. She's in everything. Yeah. Nominated for 21 Academy Awards. She only won three. But anyway, you know her. Top, top of the line actress. She was born today. What year? Ed Sullivan? 1952. 52. 1942. 42. 1945. 45 for the point. 49. It's, uh, Barry gets a point, and it's on to <coughs> Me. Mr. Jonathan. Elizabeth Warren is an American politician and former law school professor serving now as a senior United States Senator from Massachusetts since 2013. Isn't she Native American? <coughs> no, she's formerly a prominent scholar specializing in bankruptcy law. Did you know that? Pocahontas. 1901. 01. <laughs> oh, God. 19- he just hates her. 1949. 49. 1956. 56. Somebody has two points, and that's why he wanted to do this, because he studied. <laughs> Barry Stein. I did not study. You did not study. I think Ed Sullivan was from Massachusetts. He would have gotten it. Well, it's up to you. John Dillinger was an American gangster in the United States. He operated with a group of men known as Dillinger Gang and the Terror Gang, which was executed, which was accused of robbing 24 banks and four police stations. They robbed four police stations, among other crimes. He escaped from jail twice, but he was born today. What year? 1873. 73. 1900. 1900. 1888. 1888. And Ed Sullivan gets the point. 1903. We have three to one to zero. And I have one more question and a tiebreaker if needed. Um, And it's over to Ed Sullivan again. Cynthia Ann Lauper. Cindy Lauper is an American singer, songwriter, actress, and activist. Her album, 
She's So Unusual is the first to debut album from female artists to achieve a top five hits on Billboard Top 100s. Girls Just Want to Be Fun, Time After Time, She Bop, All Through the Night, Earned Lauper, the best new artist. She was born today. What year, Cindy Lauper? 1958. 58. 1940. 40. 65. 65. Mr. Jonathan gets a point. It's 53. And since Ed and I are tied, we okay. need to do a tiebreaker. All right, tiebreaker. And this is no, believe a back that worked. <laughs> that is, they lost. <laughs> they lost, but they want a tiebreaker for second place. I have it. It's sitting here. So it goes over to Mr. Jonathan. This is for you, Gary. Randy Couture is an American actor, former U.S. Army sergeant, retired mixed martial artist, and former colleague of Greco and Roman Russell Styling. During his tenure in the Ultimate Fighting Championship UFC, he became a three-time UFC heavyweight champion, uh, two-time light heavyweight champion, and interim UFC light heavyweight champion, and the UFC 13 heavyweight championship tournament winner. He's the first fighter to hold two UFC champion titles in two different divisions. He's Randy Couture, born today. What year? Ed Sullivan. I believe. Oh, no, it's me. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be 1962. 62. Am I in this? 1970. 70. 64. 64. Mr. 63. Mr. Jonathan will take the point in second place. And I'm not. But Barry Stein. The biggest loser. Barry Stein is the champion. No, but you're first in the line of losers. There you are. Hey, we got into it. We got into it, and we went long. I'm sorry for going long, everybody. Uh, we got the after show. We'll go a little into that. That'll air on Wednesday. We are taping the show um, this week um, because I'm leaving on Thursday, and I don't want these guys to go in alone and mess the, your whole week up for you guys that are listening. But, <laughs> no, what I want to get into is all the new cigars that are coming out, and it'll air on Saturday. The show opens yep. on Saturday morning. Yep. So, so all far, bets are off. We say whatever the hell we want. So far, five pages worth. Yes, we got a, we got a lot of it. We'll tell you all the new stuff coming out, everything that we know. Um, and we still have, actually have a few days to gather some more information, yes. but we have what we have. So thank you, everybody, for listening to the uh, retailers out there, the consumers, our, the our, IPCPR, uh, everybody, listen, we're trying to help this industry, not hurt it. We're worried about it. Uh, we're here to help, uh, and thank you for listening to the show. Um, and until then, um, you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible you learned nothing in the last two and a half hours. So always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.